Good morning, Pastor Keith Hodges here, and I want to welcome you to the Fruitful Five, five minutes that will empower and equip you to live a fruitful life for Jesus Christ. I'm excited today that we're going to open the Word of the Lord to Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 23 through 26. And today I want to talk to you about making room, making room in your life for the things of God. So Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 23 through 26 says, And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing. He said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all the land. The story, or the context of the story this morning, is that a ruler of the Gentiles came to Jesus, Jairus by name, and he requested that Jesus would come to his house. And Jesus begins a journey to his house. And on the way to his house, Jesus encounters the woman with the issue of blood. And Jesus miraculously, supernaturally heals this woman of the issue of blood that had been tormenting her uh, for most of her life. And in the process of this journey, uh, servants from Jairus' house come to him and tell him that his daughter has died, that he shouldn't bother the master anymore. And Jesus tells him to only believe. And so in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus comes to Jairus' house. He comes to the ruler's home. And when he gets there, the Bible says that there were flute players and a noisy crowd wailing. The mourners had already come in. They were already mourning and wailing her death because she had died. And the Bible says that Jesus came in, and this is what he said. He said, make room, for the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And the Bible says that they ridiculed him with laughter. I want you to understand something this morning. We have to make room. Because in the story that we read today, when Jesus told them to make room, they laughed at him, they mocked him, they ridiculed him. But the Bible says that he put them outside, and he went in, and he raised the girl by the hand, took her by the hand and raised her from the dead. I want you to understand today. I want to ask you the question, are you making room for the glory of God? Are you making room for miracles in your life? Are you making room for faith? See, we have to come to a place where we begin to make room in our lives for the glorious presence of God. We have to make room for faith. And what I love about this story is Jesus said, make room. And then when they ridiculed him, the Bible says that the crowd was put outside. I want you to understand, you're going to have to, on purpose, begin to put out the negative. You're going to have to put out the unbelief. You're going to have to put out the fear. You're going to have to uh, separate yourself, in some senses, from the people in your life that want to crowd out the glory of God. They don't want to make room. I want you to understand, we would rather make room for fear, worry, doubt, and unbelief than we would rather make room for the glory of God. But we've got to change that perspective. We've got to come to God with an attitude that says, you know what, Lord, like the ruler in Matthew chapter 9, I'm going to make room for you. I'm going to make room in my schedule for intimacy with God. I'm going to make room in my heart for a place of faith. I'm going to make room in my life for the glory of God to come. I'm going to make room in my heart and my schedule for God to work in me and God to work through me. Think about it for a minute. Think about how crowded our lives become. Think about how busy we are. If you were to ask people, how are you doing? When I ask people, how are you doing? The, the most common response is people say, well, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I want to challenge you today. Let's not be busy. Let's be fruitful. Let's not be busy. Let's be fruitful. How do we become fruitful for God? We begin to make room. We make room in our schedule for God. We make room uh, in our heart for faith. We make room in our lives for God to work and for God to move in the midst of our circumstances. If you are so busy that you don't have time to pray, you don't have time to read the Bible, you don't have time to go to church, you can't stop what you're doing and tell somebody about Jesus Christ, you can't take advantage of a divine opportunity when the Holy Spirit opens a door for you. If you're so busy, you don't have time to walk through that door of opportunity to do what God is wanting you to do. I want to challenge you today. Make room. Let's make room for God. Let's make room for His glory. See, I believe there are miracles. There are signs and wonders. I believe there are, there's salvation and transformation that God wants to take place in people's lives. And I believe what He's looking for is individuals that will make room for Him that'll make room in their schedule for God, that'll make room in their family for God, that'll make room in their lives for God, that'll make room for faith, 
that'll make room for his glory and that'll make room for his power to come. So I want to challenge you today. Be like the ruler in Matthew chapter 9. Be like Jairus and let's make room for his glory. And I believe this. I believe we'll see our daughters arise. I believe we'll see our sons arise. I believe we'll see a generation arise out of the ashes of death and decay and begin to walk in the glory of God when we begin to make room for him to work in our lives today. God bless you today as you make room in your heart to be fruitful for the glory of God. Have a great day in the Lord.